Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you guys like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So we have a new poll that came out from one of the most left-leaning pollsters in the country, NPR Marist, out of the state of Pennsylvania, and Donald Trump leads... This is post-conviction. He leads across the board. He leads with independents. He leads with enthusiastic voters, not so enthusiastic voters, and he leads, period. He leads by two in Pennsylvania. And you have third-party candidates that are polled in the mix, but these are pretty reasonable numbers. RFK Jr. is not going to get 10%. He probably gets 2 to 3%. So this is in line with what you would expect and when you look at it, Donald Trump, among those definitely voting close to 50%, this is a brutal poll for Joe Biden out of Pennsylvania. A brutal, brutal poll for Joe Biden. You look at this, and it's like, this is a state that is a must-win for Joe Biden. If Donald Trump wins this state, it is likely game over. You couple this with Georgia and that's that. It doesn't matter what happens in the Southwest where it's looking good for Trump in Arizona and Nevada. It doesn't matter what happens in Michigan. It doesn't matter what happens in Wisconsin. Pennsylvania is basically the entire ball game. Couple that with Georgia, that's 270. And he has taken a lead in the aggregate. He leads by over two points. And this is one of the most left-leaning pollsters. You cannot use the midterms as an excuse for this one because they had Fetterman winning by six points. Fetterman did not end up winning by six percentage points, but it kind of just shows you how these things are, are really starting to shake out. What's going on in this election? And this is after the conviction. Donald Trump seeing a bump in the state of Pennsylvania in a pollster that is not friendly for him and it's not friendly for Republicans. And it makes sense. You talk about what do you need to do to flip the state of Pennsylvania? A little tiny shift in Philadelphia in terms of raw vote percentages and turnout is more than enough to flip the state. And it seems like Biden's enthusiasm in eastern Pennsylvania is not going to be where it was in 2020 when you had, you know, fresh novelty and his popularity has tanked since then. And he's struggling in some polls. We see in New Jersey and New York, the Mid-Atlantic as a whole, even Virginia is not doing so hot. It would make sense that Donald Trump can make up enough ground to win Pennsylvania. The voter registration numbers look good. Everything looks good from a, I guess you would say, a metric standpoint in the state of Pennsylvania. It absolutely does. And that's the game if he wins it. You know, we have five months to go, but things are not looking good for Joe Biden. Joe Biden, now they're trying to say, well, he's a convicted felon. Well, why are you losing to a convicted felon in what you try to claim is your home state or one of your home states? I mean, he was born in Pennsylvania. He lived in Pennsylvania for about 10 years. He was dubbed their third senator, but he's down to a convicted felon in Pennsylvania, so he likes to call him. Meanwhile, Joe Biden, the unconvicted felon, now he's officially raised a convicted felon with the whole Hunter thing. And of course, it's a red herring. We know it's a red herring. He shouldn't be on trial. Uh, he should never been on trial for the whole uh, gun charge. In fact, I think it's an unconstitutional law and it's a distraction from all the other stuff he's done that implicates his father. They can use that as a scapegoat to say, well, you know, technically Biden's not involved. He just got a drug problem. The drug problem's a little bit of a, a red herring. Yes, it's it's a meme. I mean, the guy gets so high off cocaine, he smokes Parmesan cheese, but still, it doesn't matter. Uh, nevertheless, it, it just shows that Biden is in a big, big tough spot. I don't know how that's going to impact the election. I think it could impact the discourse, but so far the discourse has not really impacted the general election quite a bit. Although I will say that if uh, Hunter does not get jail time, it's going to be really hard to justify putting Trump in jail and, and uh, seeing it significantly hurt him because that's just going to be the two-tier justice system on full display, unlike anything we've ever seen. But what's also like things that we have seen is the new 538 forecast. And I did want to touch base on this as well because this is 538. And Donald Trump is up in the polls in every single swing state. Americans are very upset at the current state of affairs by all metrics. 
that's not exactly a, a very good way of looking at the election when you see that. But you look at this, Joe Biden, they have Joe Biden leading Trump in the probability, 53 to 47, which is such a cop-out cope from these people they genuinely believe this. They genuinely, or at least want to put this out there so their audience gets placated. Oh, Biden's still in the lead. It's like, no, I mean, clearly he's not. You could say he can win, but the probability is definitely in Trump's favor. If Joe Biden was leading the polls in every single swing state, some swing states that he, you know Democrats didn't even win last time, and he was up by let's say, five points in some of them. There's no universe that Trump would even be a 20% favorite, yet they make Biden the outright favorite, even if it is by a narrow margin. I mean, this is malpractice. This is ridiculous. Even by their own aggregates, Donald Trump is still in the lead in all those swing states. So there's just really no justification for what 538 is doing here other than, oh, we're going to placate our liberal audience and, and kind of just pacify them, especially after this came out. Because if you're up in Pennsylvania in this poll, you're up in Pennsylvania. There's no way around it. We have not seen a poll with a Biden lead in Pennsylvania. I think we've seen one since, or maybe two since like the start of the year. And one of those, actually both of them were very flawed in terms of methodology. But even then, those were from months ago. Donald Trump has been convicted of a felony. Obviously, it's bogus. We know it's bogus. We've covered that ad nauseum. But the fact is that that was their Hail Mary. Oh, we're going to hit you with a label. And so far, it is indeed bouncing off. And Donald Trump's influence in many ways is actually growing. And we'll talk about that in the primaries and, you know, the good and the bad of it, including that. But Ohio... There was a special election in a seat Trump won by 20, I believe 29 percentage points. That was a uh, less than a 10 point margin for the Republican. I think that the current outgoing Republican, he went to be the, um, the president of a university and it opened up the seat. I didn't even know the election was taking place until last night. And I assume a lot of people in the district didn't know either, but this is the latest cope because every time a Democrat outperforms in a special election, it's definitive. These are real results, not polls, they say. But when Republicans do it in Georgia, for example, or they, you know, do very well in terms of primary turnout in some key states, oh no, that doesn't matter. You can't extrapolate from that according to these people, the gatekeepers of the election mafia, like the aforementioned 538. Now, Nate Silver formerly known as Nate Plastic. He's making a lot of sense lately. He's pissing off a lot of his fellow liberals, but he's not with 538, didn't really make that forecast. But, you know, it's like you have all these other people. They look at this and they say, Trump is done. It's like, how is Trump done? You had not even 60,000 voters turn out in this district. And the Democrat in 2022 that got their ass kicked got 90,000 votes in 2022. So the turnout is too low to really extrapolate. It's true that Republicans didn't really turn out in the rural areas. You look at a county like Monroe County, there was like, you know, Trump got 5,000 votes there in 2020. You got like, what, 10% of his voter base? Trump didn't even endorse this guy either. And Trump, in, in terms of the primary in Ohio, did extraordinarily well, um, you know, across the board carried Bernie Moreno to a much larger than expected victory. I think you're going to see the same thing happen come November. You know, the Marist poll in Ohio had J.D. Vance tied in their final poll with Tim Ryan. Same poll has Trump up seven. So, you know, Trump probably wins the state by double digits. Moreno will likely end up being carried. But the number one takeaway is not just Republicans didn't turn out, but the, where they actually did was Mahoning County, which is an ancestrally Democrat county in the district. And this is a county that even J.D. Vance won, despite, you know, underperforming statewide and Tim Ryan kind of trying to appeal to those voters, even though Vance did kind of underperform in this part of the district. But um, there's various reasons for that. But Mahoning County, this is a county that is zooming to the right, it seems. I mean, this was a county Obama won by like close to 30. Donald Trump narrowly won it. Actually, Hillary Clinton won it in 2016 by the skin of her teeth. Trump flipped it. And even in a race like this where Republicans underperformed 
by, you know, around 20 points, still 50-50 county. It's going to zoom right. East of Cleveland probably does zoom right. You know, there is something possibly going on there because this matched the trends, but turnout in other places in the district were low. But the one place where you had somewhat okay uh, turnout, I guess you would say, it's about where half the district was. Michael Rooley did all right. Not great, but all right. Uh, you know, he lost the county by 14 votes, literally. It's like, yeah, Mahoning County, if anything, if, if you want to take a clear uh, sign away from it, is that this county is, is clearly trending to, to, to the right, at least in terms of a trend, even when some of these other counties swing. This district's going to swing back in November. This is just Republican mechanics at most. I don't know. But just very low turnout overall. No Trump presence or endorsement. So anyone trying to extrapolate what it means for November is just talking out of their ass. But in terms of other races, we saw South Carolina, Nancy Mace, never thought I'd see the day we'd be rooting for her to win anything, but she's had a little bit of a turnaround, and also you see the fact that she's being primaried out from the left, from the establishment. Catherine Templeton, the mccarthy back challenger, got utterly decimated by Nancy Mace in that district, and you see Trump's endorsee Mark Burns he advances to the runoff. He was down earlier in the night, but he ended up coming in first. He'll probably win that runoff there in the third district. And you have some other uh, results as well, but disappointing result here. The much more conservative, uh, much more authentic conservative in Adam Morgan fell short to William Timmons. Trump, I think, stayed out of the Timmons race in 22, but then he endorsed Timmons this time around. And that was brutal because we could have got a really massive upgrade there. But again, I don't know what's going on with the intel because you know Trump's endorsements for a while really improving, and they think they still have improved. But this cycle, congressionally, there's a few blind spots, and I think that was one of them. But another race where you had a blind spot was North Dakota, where you did see uh, Rick Becker, who was uh, uh, just objectively the America First anti-establishment candidate, even pro-Trump candidate. He lost uh, by 16, 17 points to Julie Federchak, and I think a lot of that did come from the fact that she did get that Trump endorsement. So again, she is mediocre. She's not downright awful, it seems, compared to Kara Mund, who would have been the worst choice, but Rick Becker, you know, you could have had a massive upgrade there, fell short, not really too happy about that in terms of some of these uh, down-ballot races does seem like, uh, you know, you have this theme of incumbents getting primaried out. Seems like you have maybe a couple uh, cases of that being the case, but not always is what it really seems. And Kelly Armstrong basically has won the governorship in North Dakota with her or his primary win. It's a guy uh, named Kelly. He's a mediocre congressman and he'll replace Doug Burgum. Uh, but in terms of other results, you have Maine, you have the good candidate win in the second district. We'll see if they'll be able to knock off Jared Golden, but you also have Nevada and you have Jackie Rosen. She won her primary, but Republicans, they combined for more votes than the Democrats, which is somewhat anticipated because you had more uh, primaries on the Republican side that were competitive uh, but still, Nevada, is that a sign of it moving to the right? Probably not in and of itself, but you did have a lot of uh, defectors from Jackie Rose, and it's a closed primary too. So maybe you could say that's also a good sign. A lot of these uh, Gunter voters, they're uh, for sure going to vote for Trump. Brown and Gunter getting uh, almost as much as Rosen, and then you have these other candidates. Jim Martian, a lot of those voters are going to go for Trump as well. So you look at this, and all around does seem like Republicans did well in Nevada. Sam Brown, he was endorsed by Trump. Jeff Gunter was stronger, but he didn't really have much of a chance. Brown's going to be the nominee. I hope he wins in November. We'll see if he does. You still have some competitive races going on here. John Lee, David Flippo, we don't know the winner of that. Uh, Nevada counts at a snail's pace, but still, Trump's endorsees doing well. That's a good sign for Trump. But, you know, at times, you know, there's there's some candidates that probably should have got the endorsement. So it's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a mixed bag in that department. But overall, um, it was a good night for Donald Trump. 
and Republicans avoided disaster in Ohio's 6th district, but it was closer than it should have been. But on top of that, we have good news out of Marist of all pollsters. Donald Trump, he's in the lead in Pennsylvania. Absolutely huge. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Like this video down below. Comment down below. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Red Eagle, out.